Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Sprueverse, my scale model universe. Happy 2021. Let's pray that this is a, a, a great year for everybody. Here we are in the final part of Build the Interstellar Ranger. I hope you've been enjoying the content as much as I've enjoyed building this with you. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Uh, I would appreciate it. We're going to have a lot of fun this year, and uh, it, um, it means a lot to me, so thank you. And thank you for all the great comments as, uh, as well. Those are also appreciated. Here we go, part four. Now, as I said, we will uh, have removed all of the Aztec dummy masks. Uh, we talked a little bit about the shading, the various different shades, and why we did that and how we're going to create that yellowing effect with an 800 grit sponge. We talked a little bit about that. But when I left you, all the masking was on, and I've deliberately left it in a raw state for you because I wanted you to see warts and all what happens when these masks come off because it's not always perfection. Um, and so let me put on fill cam here for just a quick second uh, so that you can see uh, what I am talking about. Here is the model up close and personal. I want to point out some, some warts to you. We have some overspray here. Uh, we've got a window that is a little chipped here. Uh, we've got a really nice, uh, a nice frame here. And we've got a couple of frames here that have got overspray in them. Uh, so that's not great. And then when we look at the underneath of the model, we've got some nice crisp lines, but we've also got some lines that failed uh, the, uh, the, the test here. And we, we've got a, a couple of things, uh, little skags here that need to be, to be cleaned up. Now, um, that is what's going to happen when you remove masks. Sometimes you get really lucky and you get nice clean lines, but sometimes you don't. And that's part of the fun of this. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go through this and I'm going to carefully start uh, cleaning up all of those areas so that we've got something relatively uh, f uh, sort of finished um, in terms of the exterior uh, paint scheme. Because this is not a complicated paint scheme, but what can be complicated is how we finish it with all the weathering and um, all of the panel line work we want to do and the burns and, the, and, and all the things that make it look rough and old and tumbled. And th that's what I want to do. I want this to look uh, really weathered and worn. Um, you might choose to, sh to, to build yours in a pristine manner, and that's fine too. But I choose to build mine uh, as if it was, um, uh, had been used uh, quite a bit in space, and that, that's just part of the fun of it for me. You have your, you'll have your own taste, and that's awesome. So, uh, through the magic of uh, leaping forward, I'm going to clean this all up, because you don't need to sit and watch me masking and touching up. Uh, you know how to do that, and uh, we'll do that, and uh, then we'll leap forward to the next step. Okay, so here we are. The masks are all off, and uh, I have been uh, touching it up and cleaning it up where I needed to. I'm going to start aging this and talking to you a little bit about how I go about that because I, I want this to look weathered and old. So some of the places where the lines don't quite perfectly match, that's okay because uh, we're gonna start to age this down. One of the difficulties with this kit is the photo etch, the masking off of the windows. A lot of guys have problems getting those windows sharp. Uh, and it is a challenge, and uh, I'm going to just do a little more careful touching up with a very super fine uh, brush. I've got several of them. Um, this particular make is Atlas, and you can get them at your local hobby shop, really. Super, super fine details, and just with a little touch of your uh, Tamiya, well, actually, I, I'm, not Tamiya, I, I'm using Vallejo, but um, you could use Tamiya. Uh, you're, you're just sort of, you're gently adding paint 
to this and it will blend in. Now remember, white is one of the sort of the toughest paints to cover with. You've got to be patient with it. It's not going to do it in one uh, foul swoop for you, but um, if you're patient, uh, it will do it and it will cover and it will lay down quite nicely. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here. And then obviously once I start aging this and, and getting it uh, to where um, it looks like it's been flying through space, uh, none of this will matter. And I will gently at the very, very end before I'm finished, after all the weathering is done, I will come back with a very, very fine paintbrush like I'm doing now and I will very carefully fill in those lines again. But right now I'm not going to worry about it because I need to get the weathering uh, layer in first. But I just wanted to show you a little bit about of, of what that takes. Painting is, to me, one of the most therapeutic and, and, and really um, fun parts of building models. Um, especially if you get to age something. Um, down the road on the channel, we're going to take an old Chevy Impala or, or a kit like that and we're going to put it in a junkyard and rust it up and make it look like it's been in a junkyard in a little diorama just because it's fun to play with with those kinds of, of weathering effects as well. Um, so the next step now for this kit is to uh, do one more uh, one more pass at the um, uh, at, 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 as what, what I told you last time, one more pass of my 800 grit sponge and I'm going to stay in one direction. Don't rub in different directions, just one direction, up and down. And um, you're going to start taking paint off and you'll start getting down to uh, the, the second layer of paint, which don't forget was the more antique white and so that's how you're going to start to get some of that yellowing. Um, and it also gets a little bit of the schmutz off of everything too before I um, seal everything up here. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to seal this with a, uh, uh, a matte uh, varnish right now. Make sure that your varnish, your matte varnish is compatible with the paint that you're using. I, I, I've told you this before, but so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to get a, a clear coat on this just to kind of seal it up a little bit and that'll make it a little easier for us to apply the washes but before I can do that I've got to put the masks back on the window which is what I'm going to do now so I'm going to mask up the windows give it a coat of varnish and, uh, and let that s settle in and then the next uh, phase of this will be the first weathering, uh, weathering phase so uh, th that's what we'll do next Oh, and uh, one other thing um, before before we move on, I thought it might be fun just to show you uh, the base. Here it is uh, that we're going to uh, we're going our our range is going to live on. Now I I, I picked a, a brown surface because um, what I what I really love ab about the brown surface. Let me get get you in camera. There you go. Is it really 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 forces your eye onto the model um, and, and, and really punches it up. And since this is just basically, this model is just basically black and white, I think that, that really works and it, look, and it looks like a Martian surface. So this is the base it's going to live on and, and that's sort of fun. You can really start to see it coming together. Uh, let me show you a little bit of that on uh, Philcam. Um, I don't really like to do a lot of it at this point because um, you know we're we're in the process of, of, of sort of putting it together but you can see that uh, she's really taking shape and, and uh, she she's looking she's looking fine um, so the only thing I have to do now is just put the engines in which is what I'll do um, th and that will complete the build except for two tiny uh, little pieces here which um, uh, I'll show you that just these little pieces that are um, shock absorbers that will go on the back. Uh, I think they're in, yeah, here we go, they're in, they're in, should be in focus. Uh, these shock absorbers which will go on, onto the back of the rear legs. Uh, but I'm not going to do those until the very, 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 very end because I don't want to have to keep touching them up. 
So that's where we are. Uh, the next step, as I said, is I'm going to mask the windows, give it a good coat, let it dry, and then we will carry on with the weathering. Okay, so through the magic of the time fairies, we're in the process of putting the weathering down on this ship. And uh, I have given the, uh, the model uh, a couple of good coats of a matte varnish. Now, I used um, a Humbro matte varnish that's good for acrylic paint. Make sure whatever varnish you put down um, is compatible with the paint that you are using. Too often that can be a big problem when it comes to sealing it and then trying to do washes and finishes. So make sure you check that. I have been using a combination of things just to sort of play with them and, and, and have some fun with it. Right now I've been using the Tamiya uh, accent panel line color which is, um, it's, it's, it's actually um, um, a, an enamel-based uh, uh, wash, curiously. All the other Tamiya paints use a lacquer, but this actually uses uh, an enamel thinner, uh, which is closer to sort of the kinds of thinners you use on oil paints. But anyway, um, I've, you put it on, give it a good hour or so to dry, and then come back with just a little dab of your thinners uh, on a Q-tip and you can start to take it off and you'll see um, that it's leaving this, this wonderful, uh, it's leaving all those panel lines in place and it's, it's making uh, for some really nice streaking. Try to stay in one direction. Don't go this way and that way because you're trying to simulate obviously space travel and you're thinking okay the ship's heading this way through space and things are flying at it. Um, and uh, m most of this uh, I would imagine is probably um, uh, things that would, would happen to this ship as it was coming into atmospheres not flying through, uh, through space. <laughs> I know there are, there's a lot of guys out there who are a lot smarter than me that would say, hey, wait a minute, uh, you won't get that kind of uh, action from space flight, but you would get it from, from, from landing. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, uh, as you can see, it's, it's coming off quite nicely, and um, we're really getting a, a, a nice result with it. And so what we'll do is, is I'm going to continue to do this, and uh, then we'll take a look at it and we'll start to think about uh, so, some other things like dry brushing and that sort of a thing. And uh, then what we'll do is when we're satisfied that it's exactly the way we want it, uh, we're going to gloss coat this and let that dry and then that will allow us to put our decals on. The decals will be the finishing sort of uh, the, the cream on the cake, as it were. Uh, and then when the glass coat is dry, um, these are very tiny, uh, very tiny decals, and there's not a lot of them, so they'll go on pretty quickly. Uh, but once those are dry, uh, we can then uh, matte coat it again, uh, put it on its base, and uh, be very proud of what we've done. So uh, let me continue on with this. And uh, then we'll take a look at it uh, when, I've, when I've cleaned it all up and we'll make some decisions about what other weathering we might need before we um, go on to dry brushing. Okay, so we're back and um, we've sort of done an overall dirty wash on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, on the ship. Um, so here we are. And um, I'm, really, uh, I'm really liking what, what we're getting here. I've um, added uh, a little bit of uh, dry brushing to the front of the ship, and I'm going to talk about that right now. And I wanted to show you another fun effect too, which is using something called um, uh, 502 Aptolong oils. Now, if you're not familiar with these, um, it, it, it's, uh, it's fun. I'll show you this on, uh, on, on Philcam. Here it is. This is uh, the 501 uh, Optolong. And um, the, the, the great thing about these, these are just oil colors really, but they've got awesome names. Like <laughs> this one is Starship Filth. I love it. Isn't that great? 
Um, so uh, it's it's really using uh, regular oil-based thinners, and you can really create some fun effects. And uh, let me let me show you how you do that. What you're going to do is you're going to get some enamel thinners, just some enamel thinners, and you're just going to sort of brush the area you want to 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 use. Um, now, be be careful here. Obviously, you do have uh, the protection of the of the of the um, uh, of the, uh, of the, of the varnish, but uh, you just got to be careful. So I'm going to put like a, a a little a little hit here. Like um, let's say uh, let's say we've been we've been hit by a uh, a little meteor or something coming a chunk of something coming coming through the atmosphere. So I've dub I've I've now carefully dabbed on the uh, the oil paint and what I'm going to do now is just gently whisk it back just like that and leave it. And you get a, you get this great hit and it looks like a, it looks like a hit. Um, and that's that's fun. So I'm going to do a couple of those. Um, we'll do one more here to show you how that looks like and then we'll get into some dry brushing here. So I'll put a little dab on there. I'll take my... Uh, let me make sure I'm in camera. I am. Take, take a little dab of my oil. Just a little, just a little hit there. And maybe I'll do one there. Like, like that. And then just very carefully I'm going to brush, I'm going to flick backwards. But like this and see what I get and um, you'll get this sort of lovely striation and then what you can do is if you if you if you think it's too much and you want to take it down then by all means take it down and uh, you'll get these lovely little um, media hits and that's fun so that's good um, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of, you know, go along and make sure that everything is looking even there. Now, let's get into dry brushing a little bit because um, that can be a lot of fun. In the back of the, the ship here, and I'll get Phil Cam out so that we can talk about the, the back of this ship, is this um, uh, solar panel array. I believe that's what it is on this cowling. And so um, what, I, what I want to do is I want to get some, some white uh, and some gray uh, staining in here. And um, we're going to do that with a dry brushing effect. So let me, let me talk you through dry brushing. There's all kinds of ways to dry brush. Um, you need a relatively stiff bristled brush. A soft brush won't do it. Um, now there, there is a company out there that's making a set of brushes just for this effect and I've ordered them and uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a show and tell uh, in, a, in another episode um, because dry brushing is, is a great effect. Before I get into that, let me show you what I did for the um, scorching. If you look on the um, production model, and even if you look on uh, some some cool photos of um, uh, the space shuttle, uh, we've talked a little bit about this in the past. They've got scorching, and blacks aren't really blacks. They kind of got they've got they've got this really interesting white striation to them. So the way we create that effect is we dry brush, and um, what you want to do is you want to get yourself a brush. I, I like to use acrylic paints and I'm dabbing this in. This is the Vallejos. Get, get your brush uh, full, of, full of the paint. Get it nice and paint so it's all in the bris bristles. And once it's in the bristles, what you're going to do is you're going to take most of it off on your uh, towel, damp towel. So you've got barely nothing left. And then what you're going to do is you're going to carefully drag it across the, the surface of whatever it is that you want to, to highlight. And um, I'm dragging it across and I'm pulling out all of the, the lines that are in those panels. They're all getting pulled out right now. And so, um, got a funky brush here. Uh, do that again. Get yourself nice and 
nice and moist. Take most of it off on your towel and then um, you start to drag it across your panels and what we're seeing is is it's picking up all of that wonderful detail that's in the panel itself. Now try try to when you do this try to be as 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 thorough as you can um, because you want to make sure that you pull out all of the detail all of that fine detail that is is living in the plastic is now getting pulled out and uh, you get this wonderful effect and uh, there you see it now if you think you've gone too far and I'm I want to clean this up just a little bit get yourself this is this is a water-based paint get yourself um, some water and a clean q-tip take most of the water off on a uh, on a on a rag and then what you're going to do make sure I'm in camera and I am is uh, you're gonna start taking uh, taking off this paint where you don't want it and you can take this right down to nothing and so um, that's what you do and you keep doing it until you get the desired effect now if you take off too much you can always put it back on it's just an acrylic paint guys and if it feels like it's not working just put your base coat back on of the black that you used uh, especially matte blacks they're very forgiving on these models and so that gives us this lovely um, uh, panel line effect and scorching on the back of these panels and you really start to see them now I mean uh, I'll show you on Philcam uh, you can really see the grids now and you couldn't see those before um, take a look at this uh, now obviously we're way too close to this model and um, the cameras are not very forgiving but my point in showing you this is that you are really starting to pick out details now once we clean this up this is really going to look nice and you can see I've done the same effect here on the side of the uh, the burners for uh, for a scorching effect so I'm going to keep on going with this and um, we'll take it uh, to the next step in just a second here okay so I'm pretty happy with where I am weathering wise um, I'm 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 really uh, really liking it. It's um, I've got uh, the back all scorched. You have to ignore the white plastic feet. I can paint those black, but as I said, I'm going to leave them clean so that I've got a gluing surface. But um, I really like the way uh, this turned out. Um, I'm going to do just a little bit more detail work to the hatch, just to punch that up a little bit. But uh, all in all, I'm very happy with it. The next step for this is I'm going to do one final cleanup just to make sure everything looks nice. And the way I do that, guys, is if something is a little heavy or a little raw, I can take uh, an 800 or a 1200 sponge to it and I just gently rub the surface and you'll see you get this lovely smudging and sanding effect and it really works nicely and you, you, um, uh, you'll you add some even more greater detail to it. Take your time, be very gentle and you'll get a great result. Uh, I'm going to leave the masks on because uh, the next time we see this we're going to um, have glossed it. Uh, I will put the decals on. You don't need me to show you how to put on a decal and uh, we will present it on its stand for the finale. And there you go. Uh, lots of fun. Little touch-ups here and there, but you know, a model is your creation. It's your art. It should look the way you want it to. And um, everyone is going to be different, uh, and you'll just get better and better and better at it, as I will. 
Um, and, and every time I work on one of these kits, I, I just really get this, this wonderful satisfaction of, of, of looking at something uh, that's iconic and a lot of fun to build. So there it is. And um, we'll just uh, clean this up and then I will present it in its final, uh, final state. Voila, here we are. This is the, the finished Ranger. And she's a beauty. Um, I would say I've put a good two weeks into this in total. And uh, I have to say it's a lot of fun. Now I have weathered it and finished it the way it looks to me um, in space. I've used, uh, if you go to coltvman.com, there are some incredible reference photos there, tons of them. I highly recommend you check out Cult TV Man. There's great stuff there, and there's information about him on my website, spruverse.com. This was a lot of fun to build. Let me throw up uh, Phil Cam for you so that you can see her in all of her glory. And she's a beauty. Uh, lots of fun to build and to weather and uh, it came together really well. If I had one small complaint about this kit, the legs on the model obviously are in scale, but they are very, very delicate and they're very flimsy. So uh, you kind of gotta, um, you, you kind of gotta be careful with that, but uh, it's great fun to build, guys, and I hope you try it. Please um, check out the, the aftermarket products as well to improve your models, the masks, the photo etch, they all just add another layer of uh, detail and fun to your kit building. So that's the Interstellar Ranger. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the build series. If you do like what you see, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Join me on this adventure. Check out Spruverse.com, my website. I'm on Instagram, Spruverse, at Spruverse. Thanks for, for tuning in. Happy New Year to everybody. Be well, stay healthy, build something, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.